are going to take a thrifted pair of pajama pants, some scraps around my sewing room, turn these into a patchwork pair of couture shorts that you would spend quite a bit of money on in a high-end boutique. I'm so glad you're here with me. Let's get to it. I want about a seven inch inseam. So that means I have to cut 21 inches off the pant leg. So I am just going around the entire pant leg, marking 21 inches from the bottom up with my tailor's chalk, and then I'll cut along those dashes. I will be adding a triangle into the sides because I want my legs a little wider. But right now I'm going to go ahead and cut it open in preparation for that because it will make the patches a whole lot easier to sew as well. So there's a side seam right here. Half an inch on the back side of the shorts, half an inch from that side seam, I'm just going to cut these open. And I am going to the waistband about an eighth of an inch from it. I'm not going to cut the waistband, just right about there. And I'll do that on both sides. Okay, we're going to start by doing a patchwork design on the front and back of the shorts. And I've already pre-cut my patches. And what I've used are some quilts. This is kind of a lap blanket. When I see quilts and they're cute, I collect them. I grab them at the thrift store. This is a floral dress. I've made, cut some patches out of that. You know, some thrifted fabric, a piece of a shirt, and some flannels. Now I've been playing with my patches and I just have them on the cutting board just so I can move it around a little bit. But I have it kind of laid out the way I want and I am just going to lay these out on my shorts now. Okay, I have a little of the plaid showing through still from the shorts, which I like. A lot of florals, I cut out a heart here. A lot of these are vintage type cotton fabrics from those quilts. And now what I want to do is destroy some of these. I am going to take a few of these and just cut some holes in it. And those will fray a little bit. Okay. Now, once I have the holes all cut, I'm going to pin these down. And I slipped an old cutting mat in between the layers so that I can pin easily. And as far as the composition, I really had no rules. I knew I wanted a lot of floral and checks and plaids. And the pattern I wanted small. It's a lot cuter if the patterns are tiny. So I'm just going to get everything pinned on. Now I have the front all pinned. I'm going to take it to my sewing machine, use a straight stitch, gold colored thread, and just sew everything on, staying close to the edges. Now these did have pockets and I'm losing them. You know, it's too hard to sew this many patches on with pockets. So I'm just sewing right over top of them. Okay, the front is all sewn, so cute. Now I need to do the back. And when I cut the patches out here, I cut an extra one out for the back and I'm basically, basically going to lay it out the same way, pin it and sew it minus the heart. I think I'm only going to do the heart on the front. Okay. 
Okay, now the back is all sewn. There's the front, and we're still open on the sides, and I want to finish that up. Now, my goal here basically was to make the leg hole a little wider. And this cut on both sides is 15 inches tall. So I made a paper pattern that is 16 inches tall, one inch taller than this, one inch across the top and minus three and a half inches across the bottom. That will make my leg hole a little bigger for me. So then I took this pattern, it's basically a blunt triangle, and I cut out two pieces of my quilt topper, one for each side. Now, I like the wrong side better. It's just more tattered and wonderful. So I will be sewing these in with the wrong side facing out. Okay. I'm going to make this super simple for myself and you. <laughs> so here is my cut. I'm on one side of the pant leg. I am just going to sew this on the top, over top of that cut. And so what I'll do, and I won't even need to pin this, I will take it to my machine and right here at the very top of that split, I'm going to lay the top of my triangle, stitch it over. I'm going to use a fairly small straight stitch. And then I'm just going to line this up as I go down one side and stitch that on. I'm going to overlap it about quarter of an inch and stitch all the way down. And then when I'm done with that side, I'll come to this side and do the same thing. Easy peasy. Let's not make things harder than they have to be because <laughs> it will turn out so cute still. Okay, here's what they're looking like so far. All right, so I'm going to do three more things, but I'm going to do it out of order a little bit just for filming sake. I am going to tea stain it. I am going to do a decorative sort of paint splatter technique on it. And then I am going to take a couple nights with it on my lap and just do some slow whip stitching with embroidery thread. But what I'm going to show you right now is I'm just going to maybe do one patch to show you how I just will do the slow stitching and then I'll go dye it, do the paint splatter, and then we don't have to wait for it to dry for me to show you how to do the whip stitching. I am going to be using, here's my embroidery thread, all different colors and I don't know the sizes if they come in different widths and stuff. I'm just not that kind of sewer. <laughs> and I just have a needle big enough to fit my embroidery thread. I don't know what size. It's just laying loose. And so I took a piece of embroidery thread and I just, I'm just going to use a single strand. So I fed it through the needle about this far. Now at the end, I'm going to make a knot about right here because I will need that to tie off my stitching when I'm done and I will start like with this little patch now I will go around that heart on the front for sure and I will go around certain patches of course I'm not going to do all of them that would take me a lifetime and then maybe I'll do some stitches through some patches but I'll show you more in detail when I get it done where I did it because I don't really know at this point. So I want my stitches to be about half an inch long on this yellow and they will vary. So I'm coming up from the bottom and I'm going to go straight across into the patch. See, I'm 
I start on the outside of the patch and then come in on the inside. This is just so easy. <laughs> and then I will come up about right here from underneath. and just do that all the way around. And then when I get to the place where I started, I have that long tail that I can tie my double knot and tie my thread off when I'm all done. Okay, so now it's time to go upstairs and tea stain this. I'll take you with me. I made a little shirt quick. It was a thrifted nightgown. I cut it off, put elastic at the bottom, put a little patch that says love on it, and a little bird on the back. I zigzag stitch those on. And I'm going to dye it with it so that I have a whole outfit. Okay, I'm using black tea. This is a 100 count box. I took a pot of water, filled it up to about here, let it come to a boil, and then I put 65 bags of tea in there and let it steep, which means sit in there for 15 minutes. And I've been just stirring occasionally. And now it's time to take my tea bags out. Okay, I don't know if you can tell. It's kind of the color my tea is. Now I took my shorts and my top and got them damp in my sink and I'm just going to put them in and I'll be stirring these occasionally. I'll leave this in here for at least an hour. You can leave it overnight if you want. Okay, now my hour is up. I am just going to rinse them and wring them out and I am going to put mine in the dryer and then we'll paint them. Okay, here's the top and shorts after they're dry. And now I'm going to do sort of a faux paint splatter. I want this to look like a paint splatter technique, only I'm just doing it on my island. <laughs> I am using acrylic white paint, undiluted and without textile medium. I find that textile medium really I don't see much of a difference in the final results. The key is to let this cure for two weeks before you wash that. And that would be with or without the textile medium. I'm using a number 10 round brush, but don't get hung up on that. That's just what I have around the house. And I just want to make little dots and little smudges that look sort of like paint splatter. I'll do this side and then when it's fairly dry to the touch, I'll turn it over and do the opposite side. And then when I get this all dry, I will do some slow stitching, add some decorative details, and I will show you the results. Okay, I just wanna hop on here quick and show you how I'm finishing the bottom edge of the shorts. Here's some of the stitching that I've been doing. I'm not quite done, but I just thought a nice little blanket stitch would finish that off. So I learned today on YouTube how to do a blanket stitch from a channel called Red Ted Art. And I shot some footage trying to show you how to do it, but I am just not that good at it yet. I need more practice. so. I am going to put the link to this tutorial and it's real simple and short and she gets right to the point um, how to make a blanket stitch and uh, the link will be down in my description. Okay, here they are. So fun and so easy to make. Now, I didn't like the other shirt so I went with this one. Um, keep in mind, these can be knee length. They don't have to be pajamas. They could be any plaid pair of pants. Let me give you another spin. I'm not the best at modeling, I feel. 
Um, thank you so, so much for joining me. I'll bring it in a little bit so you can have a closer look at the details. And there are so many details. Have a wonderful week.